With a population of more than 1.4 billion people and an area that's almost the size of Europe, China is a behemoth when it comes to countries. So naturally, it has to be divided into administrative territories in order to be able to manage such a large country. While not a federation, China does have provinces, which are the highest administrative level in the country. It also has four municipalities, large urban areas that are directly administered by the central government. One of them is Chongqing, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Join me as we explore the so little known regions of mighty China. Chongqing is officially a municipality of China that's considered to be on the same level as its provinces. It is, however, an interesting urban center since it's comprised not just of the city itself, but also 26 districts and 12 counties. While Chongqing City is home to roughly 8.8 .8 million people, the municipality has a total population of over 30 million people. Even though it's not a contiguous urban area, technically it can claim to be the largest city proper in the world since it's roughly the size of Austria. All these stats are quite impressive, nevertheless, outside of China, barely anyone has ever heard of Chongqing. So, if you care to find out more, stay tuned, cause we got loads to talk about. 20 to 30 thousand years ago, the first humans arrived to Chongqing and made it their home. We know very little about those people and they hardly had anything to do with today's population, so let's jump to more recent times. Sometime in the 11th century BC, this territory belonged to the state of Ba, which was a loose confederation of tribes under one king. Much later, in 316 BC, they were easily absorbed by the Qin, who decades later would go on to conquer and unite all of the Chinese states. Under imperial rule, Chongqing was known by several names until 1189 AD, when Emperor Guangzong renamed it. Chongqing means double celebration and refers to the fact that Guangzhong was promoted from the ruler of a prefecture to a Fu, an urban prefecture, and that same year was crowned as an emperor of the Song dynasty. For centuries, Chongqing remained pretty much unknown for the Western world until 1876, when following the murder of British diplomat Augustus Raymond Margery, Great Britain forced China to sign the Chefu Convention. As a result of that treaty, Chongqing opened up to British consulates and allowed British ships into its ports. Just nine years later, Japan and France also forced their way into Chongqing, followed by Russia and Germany. While these acts were forced upon China, they did open up Chongqing to the world and put it on the path it is today. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, part of World War II, Chongqing became a very important city for China. In 1937, the Empire of Japan started a full-scale invasion of China, committing terrible crimes. Nanjing, China's capital city, was about to fall into the hands of Japanese soldiers, so 13 days before the fall, the national government was relocated to Chongqing. On December 11th that year, Chongqing officially became the new capital of China. Tens of thousands of enterprises, schools and thousands of tons of gold were relocated to this city. Because of this, Chongqing became a prime target for Japanese bombers. From 1938 to 1944, Japan carried out 268 air raids, dropping over 3,000 tons of explosives, killing over 10,000 civilians and destroying more than 30,000 buildings. These were tragic times, but the end of World War II saw Chongqing as a heavily industrialized major urban center, a status it would keep to this very day. One of Chongqing's biggest companies is one you may not have heard of yet. Chang'an Automobile, one of China's major car manufacturers, is headquartered in this city. They produce passenger cars, commercial vans, electric vehicles and light trucks and are China's second most popular car brand. Founded in 1862, Chang'an began as a military supply factory and then went on to build China's first production vehicle in 1959. They produce and sell millions of cars today and even partnered up with some global powers like Ford and Mazda. To the rest of the world, this brand is completely unknown, but in China they really are a big deal. And with plans to expand into other areas of the world, there's a big chance that one day soon you might spot a piece of Chongqing on your very own street. 
On March 14, 1997, the Eighth National People's Congress deliberated and approved the merger of Chongqing with the prefectures of Fuling, Wanshang, and Changjiang, thus creating the Chongqing Municipality. This new entity brought together over 30 million people that now found themselves under the direct rule of the central government. While one of the reasons for this merger was the economic development of the western regions, there was also another reason. Between Chongqing and neighboring Hubei province lie three consecutive gorges formed by the mighty Yangtze River. In 1994, China began constructing a huge dam to harness the power of this geographical feature. Now called the Three Gorges Dam, this construction, which is the most powerful power station on the planet, raised the water level in the reservoir by 175 meters. For 1.2 million people, this meant that they had to leave, and many were taken to the newly created Chongqing municipality. Officially, the relocation was meant to urbanize the region and wasn't due to the floodings, and officially Chongqing was created to urbanize and create economic opportunities. And, to be fair, the government did succeed with both of these objectives. Regarding its economy, Chongqing is on the rise on an impressive scale. The municipality is facing a mind-blowingly fast urbanization. 137,000 square meters of usable floor space is being built in Chongqing per day. On average, 1,300 people move into the city daily. 1 million cars, 9 million motorcycles and God knows how much food, electronics, textiles and raw resources leave Chongqing every year. Despite this, the municipality is still lagging behind other Chinese powerhouses like Shanghai and their GDP per capita is still below the national average. There is, however, a massive government push to transform Chongqing into the region's main economic center, and so far, they seem to be on the right track. If you find yourself touring Chongqing, there's lots of things to see and do here. But there's one place you should probably check out before you leave. Fengdu Ghost City. This is a large complex of shrines, monasteries and temples, all dedicated to the afterlife. Specifically, to hell. In Chinese mythology, Diyu is the realm of the dead, the underworld that's the equivalent of hell in western mythology. Located on Ming Mountain, the ghost city began its legendary existence almost 2000 years ago. Then, two imperial officials, Yin Changsheng and Wang Fangping, came to the mountain to practice Taoism and in the process became immortals. When you combine their names, you get Yin Wang, which means King of Hell, thus beginning the site's focus on the underworld. The city was made to be a model of Yu Du, the capital of Hell, where the souls of the dead arrive to face three challenges presented by demons. Fail those challenges, and hell is where you'll pass the rest of your eternity. Fengdu Ghost City is a very interesting place to see where the mythos of Confucianism, Taoism and Buddhism meet. It is definitely a unique place and is surely worth a visit. That was all for today, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Leave your comments downstairs and, if you wish to do so, you can help out this channel through my Patreon page. I do hope to see you next time, bye.